Hello, welcome, how are you? Uh, today I'm going to study uh, how is going to be the movement for the independence of Catalonia after the pandemic of the coronavirus. But before I'm getting to this subject, I want to stop one moment to see how the Spanish nationalism at the beginning of the pandemic, when we left all other subjects, including Catalonia, to focus on the virus, they thought and dreamed that maybe it was the time uh, where uh, the uh, Catalan independentism would uh, start to vanish. <laughs> so uh, we can see that in this article that says the pandemic that devours the process of independence of Catalonia. But this kind of premonition is not something new uh, that it's happening now, but it happened from the beginning of this process of independence. Uh, when the movement has some difficulties, the Spanish nationalism always says uh, the independent movement for Catalonia is going to die. And we can see this in this collection of articles that I bring to you. But can we think that the movement for the independence of Catalonia is going to vanish after the COVID-19? I think that if the reasons that uh, makes the Catalan people to be uh, very insatisfied inside Spain have not disappeared, why are we going to expect some kind of change? And also, we are not talking about a little part of the Catalan society so that we can take the microphone out of them and they are not going to be heard. But it's a big, a huge part of the Catalan society, maybe even the majority. So their hopes and uh, uh, worries uh, will be uh, in the political arena, uh, whether we want it or not. But let's see how the Spanish government has uh, dealt with this uh, crisis. Uh, this uh, government uh, made by uh, the socialist Spanish party with Podemos, uh, that is a, part, a political party more on the left, and they claim them to be the most progressive uh, uh, government uh, that the history of Spain has had. But, uh, okay, uh, from the beginning, <laughs> the kind of approach that they did, it was in fact an approach that could be done in the same way by a government on the right. And we can see that because in the parliament, the opposition from the right, they wanted to attack the government, but they didn't know how because the approach they have done, it's the same that uh, these political parties would do. So they uh, had to take all uh, little mistakes that the government has made, like with the test or with the masks. So it was only that. It's true that now, when the pandemic is going down a little bit, these uh, political parties in the right and far right, they are trying to attack the government and make a kind of destabilization movement to go against the government. So let's see how the Spanish government did with this crisis in four points. First point, uh, there was an authoritarian centralization, not asking to the regions, but just imposing it. And uh, because in Spain there is a kind of decentralized system in which there is a lot of autonomies and they have some kind of self-govern. Uh, this is because the Catalan people, Basque people and Galician people, they ask to, of, uh, to have a kind of self-govern. So uh, wanting to offer this, but in the same time not uh, wanting like uh, it was four countries in the same country, they said, OK, uh, you can have uh, some self-govern, but every region in Spain will have uh, so. And, uh, but in this crisis, they show that uh, from the Spanish government, they don't believe in this kind of system because when there is a serious uh, problem, they centralized everything instead of relying on the uh, autonomies. And maybe the good thing would have been the opposite one because uh, when you have a health system 
uh, all over the country, then uh, from the Spanish government, uh, they can uh, help and coordinate a little bit and then every autonomy will uh, act in a very local and quick uh, way. So this will be very good uh, to fight the pandemic. But instead of that, they centralized everything in Madrid. Uh, in the health minister, they haven't done this job for the last uh, 30, 40 years because it was in the autonomies. So they had a lot of uh, decisions to make in a short time, uh, dealing with uh, 48 million of people and uh, with a, a very different uh, diversity in the regions. So what happened? They had too much information, they were collapsed, they were overwhelmed, and then they made a lot of uh, mistakes and they act in a slow and uh, late. So uh, maybe because of that, we have uh, one of the highest uh, mortality rates uh, per million of inhabitants all over the world. And let's see also how they made the decisions. They, uh, on Saturday, the ministers, they met and they made decisions. And on Sunday, the president of uh, the government met the presidents of the autonomies. And uh, he said, the decisions are these ones we ha you have to accept it. So uh, this is very different from the case of Germany, for instance, where Merkel meets the 16 uh, presidents of the lands. They analyze, they take decisions, and they even apply the decisions in a different way in every land, because this is what a federalism is. Then there is a second point in which uh, the Spanish government used too much uh, Spanish patriotism in the sense that we will defeat the virus all united. All united, but with the centralized power in Madrid, and this uh, thing of all united seems to be like more against the independence of Catalonia statement than uh, a statement to do with the pandemic uh, in health. Uh, and also they used a lot the king. And uh, in Catalonia, we are not for the monarchy. We are mostly Republican. And also we know that this king comes from the dictatorship of Franco. So we don't like it so much. And also they used a lot the Spanish army. And uh, Catalan people, again, we don't like a Spanish army because they repressed so many times uh, our population. And also in Catalonia, there is a huge movement for uh, anti-militarism. So we don't like the uh, Spanish army getting into Catalonia in the streets to uh, clean the streets. We think that there is other people that can do that uh, better. And also in the press conference, every day in the first 43 days with one military person, one police and one militarized police. And they were all the time talking that we are in war, that we are soldiers and we don't like this kind of presentation. And we haven't seen all over Europe because it has some connotations to do with authoritarian regimes or even dictatorships. Then there is a third point in which, uh, in this kind of situations, sometimes you have to put the health uh, in a priority or maybe the economy. And this government on the left, they always put the economy in a priority than the health. And uh, then uh, we confined late not to damage this economy. And then we are uh, getting out of the confination. Uh, also quickly, not to damage the economy. So this is what a government on the right would have done. In fact, the um, Catalan uh, center-right political party uh, proposed the opposite, uh, to prioritize health when the pandemic was out of control, to then take care of the economy uh, when we can. Yes, it's true that uh, this Spanish government made a couple of good decisions, uh, not uh, on the right, but on the left, but uh, they were just a little bit to help. And um, it was uh, giving money to the workers that could not uh, go to work or uh, having a minimal income for the most vulnerable people. But this money is not getting to the people. So uh, there is a lot of complaint, but uh, in fact, uh, they are good decisions. Then there is a, another proposal from the uh, political party Podemos that is in the government. And it's very interesting because it, uh, it talks about uh, putting a tax to the rich people in Spain to have money to make the reconstruction after the pandemic. But uh, I think that this good idea is not going to take place. We will see. 
And then there is a fourth uh, point, which is very important, because Madrid was the focus of this infection. So they didn't close Madrid. And then all Spain got infected, even uh, areas with a low density of population. So when they didn't want to close Madrid, and they will have to explain why, uh, Catalonia wanted to close its territory and uh, not to get infected from Madrid and because it was a second focus of infection, not wanting to infect other uh, regions. But they say no way that Catalonia is getting closed because it would be like a kind of independence. And they are also maybe afraid that the Catalan government could do better than the Spanish government, like it did uh, in 2000, <coughs> 2017, where there was this uh, Islamic uh, terrorism in Barcelona, when uh, the Catalan government did a so efficient uh, police uh, uh, management of the situation. And also the Catalan government, they said uh, this uh, thing uh, that uh, maybe in an independent Catalonia, we would have had uh, less uh, mortality. And not wanting to deny that, because why Madrid should do better decisions than Barcelona? Uh, but not wanting to get to this fight, this is not the thing, it, who is doing it better. It's not like that. It's that Catalan people, we want to self-govern always. And also in this kind of pandemic, which is a very serious situation, we want to self-govern, we are prepared and we can do good things and as well as we will do uh, for sure some mistakes, but like uh, the Spanish government is doing. And this is very important for Catalan people. And we think that in this kind of state, like uh, uh, right wing and left wing are thinking about, it's not possible at all. Then there is another thing that it doesn't have to do with the uh, government, but with the justice system. And the uh, Supreme Court, uh, they said the uh, Catalan independentist people who are in jail, they cannot go out temporarily to avoid uh, getting um, uh, infected, like the, uh, the World Health Organization suggested, because they are special prisoners and they have to remain in the prison and they cannot do like other prisoners and go out. For Catalan people, this is a double injustice because these people shouldn't be in prison. Uh, they uh, are in prison to uh, organize a referendum and referendums are not uh, forbidden in the Spanish law. It was just that the Constitutional Court, they said you cannot do that referendum, and they did. So it was disobedience. But disobedience has a, a punishment of maximum one year, and then you don't, get, uh, you, you don't even get to the prison. But these political prisoners were condemned from 8 to 13 years in prison. So for Catalan people, this is very unfair, because it's using justice against politics. And uh, in this way, they pulled down the government of Catalonia in 2017. And now the far right, now it's trying to make the same with the Spanish government, uh, with this uh, COVID uh, crisis, because they are accusing in the justice that the government uh, did uh, wrong policies and then the mortality is, is uh, for their responsibility. So they want to pull down the government. So we will see what happens. But in summary, I think that Catalan people that are against um, the independence of Catalonia, they will continue to be after the pandemic. But if these people have to convince the Catalan people who is for independence, how are they going to convince us? If they see that uh, this state has a very centralizing uh, way of being, uh, it uh, uses the army, it's very near the monarchy, uh, it uh, uses the justice against the politics and it has a lot of far-right movements. So uh, I think they have a hard job and they are not going to, to, uh, to succeed. But then the movement for the independence of Catalonia, I think that it will continue. It will continue even stronger and many people is going to approach. Uh, so I think that uh, in next videos we will uh, continue to analyze the situation. So if you like this video, we can see in the next one. Bye bye.